The Gunners Podcast. Uh, hi everyone, this is Relic here um, from the Gunners Podcast. Here with my co-host Dylan and our guests, Manchester City fans. Uh, mm. I have here with me Aaron, the man himself, Omari, and Alex. Um, it's a pleasure to have you guys. Yeah man, yeah man, pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here. The podcast is going so far, only up from here. Mm, thank you for having us. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, great. So let's just head right into it. Uh, so how are you guys feeling so far about your preseason games? Uh, so you guys played Yokohama, the champions of Japan. You guys won five three. Then you headed, you, you head on into Bayern, uh, where you guys beat them two one. And just this morning, I was watching that game, so I'm very very happy to see Atletico Madrid beat you guys two one. Um, where are you feeling? Let's start with Aaron. Boy, Dikani, I don't know why you're happy, you know, because preseason means absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> the results have a, all I want to see is the team to play good. Um, and from what I've seen so far, they're continuing from last season with the same energy, with the same mindset, with the same formation. Um, of course, Pep changed his formation last season, midway through the season, and it worked wonders going into the the real important parts of last season so preseason means nothing for me um but the results don't mean anything it's just looking at how the team is playing and seeing the quality that's on the pitch all right cool <laughs> oh, all right. yeah yeah i would agree i don't read too much into preseason as many people would say preseason is mainly for getting the fitness of the players up, trying new things, um, Im- embedding new signings, even though we only bring in one player so far. So I don't pay the results that much attention, but it's good that players are getting minutes, young players are getting minutes. And yeah, looking forward to the start of the season. All right, cool. Alex? Yeah, just the same as them, really. Uh, all I'm really looking at is certain players Based on you know new signings, how and last season, not not now don't call any names right now, but certain players I'm looking at and how they're playing and see if you know they can actually make an impact next season. That's all I'm really looking at. Right, cool. And are you guys happy? Anyone can answer this. Like you guys happy with the signings you've made? You guys want any more signings? I mean, I see four. in his head. Uh, it's been a, to me. It's been a terrible um transfer window. If I'm right, we've only bring, brought in. One player so far, Kovacic. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 not good enough. When you consider the amount of players that have left our squad recently, when you look at last season, Raheem Sterling, Zinchenko, Gabriel Jesus, Fernandino. This season, Gundogan just left. Um, Riyad Mahrez, my my baller. Um, Cancelo, possible possible exit in the future. Kyle Walker might leave as well. So the squad is getting weaker. We're not bringing anybody in. So. I'm concerned, and I wish we have. I wish we would have brought in more players by now. So it's not been a great window for me. I don't know what any other guys think. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's concerning. However, none of the players that um, you have mentioned have left yet. So like Kyle Walker, Bernardo Silva has always been linked elsewhere. Um, Laporte, Laporte might leave, but the main players that we want to keep, they haven't left as yet. So we can't really say that um, it hasn't been a good transfer window as yet. I know we're still trying to get um, Guardial from Leipzig and I think that would be one of the best signings of the transfer window. So once that happens, um, I think we would have a good window. We'll, we need to replace Maris. I think Cole Palmer is a good replacement on our side. However, if Pep wants somebody else with proven Premier League quality, I, I, I know that we have been linked with Olise from Crystal Palace. I think that would be a good signing because he's just like Maris, basically. So, mm-hmm. transfer window is still open. We still we have time. Um, we, we can't be concerned right now, but I think we'll get it done in the end. Did you just okay. say Olisa is just like Maris? In terms of in, ter- <laughs> in yeah, terms of his like style of well. play, yeah. have a good left foot, can can pass by really well, a lot of skills. So I think he he has the same type of play as Maris. So it's just adding somebody else that to replace Maris. What about the skipper? Ilkay? Oh, you think Kovacic is a sufficient replacement for Ilkay? 
I don't I don't think to me I don't think Kovacic will start. I think why Ilkay is leaving, I feel that Foden needs to be in the midfield and I think Foden will get more starts since Gundogan has left. All right. Alex, you happy with the signings? You want more? I mean, no. If I'm giving this window so far a rating, this is like a, a, four, a 4 out of 10. Because I feel like we've been on Vardial for about a, a month now and progress was, it was looking at we're making progress and now we're just back at square one. So yeah. they need to try and wrap that deal up at least before the season starts. And then again, what Aaron said, I, I'd like to see Elise at City because he's a similar type of profile to Mares, and Mares just left. So I think once we get once we secure those two signings, then you know the window will be good for us. All right, cool. Um, I love hearing the city cries though. Uh, <laughs> the, the tears are amazing. So. Um, yeah, Dylan, you want to ask anything else before we move on? No, I'm just, I think for me, like, as I'm a Pep fan, right? Like, I'm not going to beat you on the bush. Pep is, to me, the greatest that I have ever seen. I hated Sir Alex. Um, but I think I look at this win and from City and I'm just really confused because I've never seen, you know, you win a treble and it's just like, you guys are still unhappy. Like, not you guys, but, like, the players. Like, how can Celo can be unhappy going back to a team that just won a treble? Like, so for me, and, like, Kyle Walker leaving, Gunda leaving, like, to me, it just raises questions as an outsider. Like, you know, I'm obviously not inside. But I think the one thing that came to mind, I don't understand, like, how Arsenal fans get when we didn't tie up Rice quickly, right? And you guys made the bid. Do you realize how many people are on our case? Chelsea's four bids into Caicedo. Guardiola has been going on from about the same time Declan Rice has been going on. And for Our some reason, long. Exactly like, so wh- why is it that Arsenal fans get all this hate? Because obviously transfers take long. So I think I just wanted to understand from your guys' perspective. Because I know that Alex texted me. I know that Mario was in the group chat saying, you know, what's going on. And I, I haven't heard anything from Aaron because it's nice to see you again for a long time. But I just want your guys' opinion. Like, why is it that Arsenal against fans get this much hate? And why is it that you guys are taking so long and not getting any hate? Uh, I'll go. I, I, think it's, I think it's because of how Arsenal fans are. Like, they, they, I think, no, I don't want to say they overhype the players, but like, when someone's doing well, you think they're like the best in the world if, if you listen to the Arsenal fans. So go, these signings, like especially with Rice, 105 million, the expectations that he has is already increased just because of how Arsenal fans are talking about him. So that's our, that's our, that's a reason why you know I wouldn't say hate, but you know more banter, like especially if he flops. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel. I feel Arsenal fans are delusional sometimes. Um, talk whole heap of foolishness, and then when when them flop, then that's when they start saying, "Oh, yeah, this never go away." Blah blah blah. Um, yeah, so that's why we just don't like you guys. <laughs> it's just so plain and simple. Arsenal, uh, the most toxic fan base, man. Most toxic. Uh, uh, so let's head into the game um, next week Sunday. So, um, yeah, how are you guys feeling? Um, what are your expectations? What are your predictions? Um, let's start with Era. Well, community shields are not really great games to watch, of course. Um, but it would be good to see the top two of last season going head to head to see some of the new players coming in. We know that Arsenal have Havertz coming in, Timber, who, who I think is a really good signing, and Rice, of course. Um, I just want to see how the two teams line up. I don't know if both teams are gonna put out the best starting lineup per se because it's just the community shield. But it will be, it will be good to get silverware, especially more more so for Arsenal. I think it will be good for them to get silverware because <laughs> they, they need confidence going into next season. So if they get this win against City, it will be good. But as you saw last season, Liverpool beat us in the community shield and go flop um, in the season. So. If you win, you just better make sure you don't flop. <laughs> um, bro. Um, let's, so, let's head over to Alex. Oh, um, yeah, I didn't get your prediction. Hold on, I didn't get your prediction. For a prediction? 
Yeah. I think Arsenal will win. Let's go to Arsenal win. But, of course, I, all right, I'll hold on to the rest for later. Yeah. All right, cool. Alex, let's go. All right. Um, I think it's a hard game to judge. And I say that because that, all right, we know how good Arsenal was for 93% of last season, to be specific, right? But the thing is, in the two games that they played against City, the standard dropped so low that you can't really judge it properly. So I can't say that, oh, bringing in Rice and Havertz and Timbo will move Arsenal from, you know, this, this space up to, you know, with City you now. Because I can't really compare it because against City, you guys flopped twice and, it's, you know, it's hard to judge it. But I think, you know, it's a, a next preseason game, but with Silverware on the line, I think Arsenal, you know, come out high-pressing, you know, Arteta imposing his tactics on the field as well as Pep. But as usual, I think City will win because we just don't lose to Arsenal. And I think the game will end around 3 1, maybe, to City. All right. My. Hey, I want to hold on. Before yeah. My, uh, you know something last season that I said to Alex, right? Because Alex asked me, you remember what I, what I said? He said, he asked me if I think Arsenal is going to win. I said, unless we beat City, there's no way we're winning the Premier League. Remember when I said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think I actually agree with Alex. And I, the reason that I really wanted him on here is because I think we're probably the only two fans that can really go at it from Arsenal <laughs> and City and not end up not talking to each other or having a blocked phone number. But it's no, man, true. Me and Ray are just like that one. But I yeah. genuinely, like, when I, when I look and see... Like, you cannot... We haven't done anything against City. Like, it's it's literally the same narrative every time we play City. We look That's how you look on FA Cup. Right? Before and then the then, oh, man, them chill. Let's chill. Right? And then we make, like, three mistakes. And I think that's the same thing I saw against us with Man United. Right? So it, it brings me to concern. But before I give you my prediction, I'll let Mario go. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with Alex that it seemed like a hard game to judge. I was kind of sitting on the fence because if it was a game during the season, I would have a more definitive answer because I would back my side to beat you know, all the time. Pip, obviously, ahead of Arteta. Arteta learned everything he know, knows from Pip. You want to try? Direct- Bro, he learned most of his stuff from Pep, majority. And the record speaks for itself. I think Pep and Arteta play like nine games, and Pep win eight, and Arteta only win one, which was the FA Cup semis, I think. So yeah. if it was a game during the season, I think it would be much easier to say um, City. But during um, the fact that the season hasn't started yet, and I'm not quite sure where both teams are, uh, it's harder to judge. And Pep has this thing about him. The team tends to peak towards the latter part of the season or mid season, like January onwards. So earlier the earlier stages is is most likely Pep trying to figure out his best eleven, tweaking tactics, tweaking formations and stuff like that. So it's hard to call, but based on the fact that you guys always struggle against us. I think I'll go with a two-one Manchester City win for this um, for this game Sunday. All right, bro. Dylan, predictions. You know, for some weird reason, like when I look forward to next season, and I think this kind of will segue. I think City is going for the quintuple next season. Genuinely, like I think about it, and I'm just like, why is it like every time I've seen Pep talk? It just feel a little bit different this season. It looked like said the man just it's either he's going for the invincible record or so because I just don't understand like mentally how he gives those players hungry. And I'm like, yeah. what's next after you know the That's trouble? Terrible. It's either yeah. you the domestic quadruple or because you guys haven't won a community shield in what four years? I think I Something think like it's that. five years that you guys have won the community shield, right? And, you know, I buy the argument that, yeah, like, Arteta takes the preseason more seriously. But I haven't seen a game where I actually thought that we'd beat them. So for that reason, you know, even though I'm the most, you know, diehard, I mean, I bleed red, obviously. But um, I just can't imagine us beating City. 
with the thought that if they don't win the Champions League for their season to be successful, I think you guys have to win everything domestically. So, yeah, and that was also. So, I yeah. think it might be either 2 1, 2 1 City, or. I mean, if Rob Holland steps on the field, <laughs> like, <laughs> there's just so many, there's so many factors in my head that, like. Holland yeah. like, won't play, bro. But, he like, watch Timber. The man look rash. And he can't be rash against the brain for even a minute. If you get what I mean? So, like, I don't know. Like, I really want us to win. But I just can't. I can't envision it. So, I think two yeah. ones. I think if it was last, I think if it was last year, I would have backed Arsenal to win. Can you remember we lost the Community Shield game to Liverpool last last season? I think how Arsenal's preseason was last last year. They were firing, um, beat up Chelsea, beat up Orlando, who else? A couple other teams, but you look really good. And the new signings that they brought in, Jesus, Zinchenko, they were settling in well. This season, the new signings that you guys have brought in. Uh, it feels like Arteta doesn't quite 100% know what their best role is as yet, and he's still trying to figure that out. So that's why I wouldn't put my money on Arsenal to beat us. And that's also a good point that Dylan made. How can you guys get better this season? That's a, that's a thing I was asking my, I was asking myself today. And um, I would say, also talking about what Aaron said as well, uh he doesn't think that we're at the level i think it was here our alex that we're at the level even with those signings um of timber Havertz, and rice as you guys but i would say we have improved our side and you guys have kind of went down a bit with those um people that you've let like like seriously bro you guys you guys yeah, got rid of Tumtagan, you guys got good of mars you got remember mars is a goal contribution guy for you guys right <laughs> Um, he, he always gets the stats. So I'm looking at your outgoings and I'm looking at my incomings and I'm saying, hey, this is, it's now a level-ish playing field, right? And it's, it's not delusion. I'm just looking at the facts, right? If you're going to look at numbers, Gundogan gave you numbers. He gave you leadership. If you're going to look at numbers, Mares was a guy that consistently gave you numbers and you haven't replaced him as yet. So this current team that I'm looking at for both of you guys, I would say it's equal. You guys have the experience and that maybe will help you to edge it. But in terms of like quality and depth, I would say it's equal right now. Zin. Um so I can I completely disagree with you to be honest. <laughs> you want, um, <laughs> you want because second. you want one second. Right, on, on. second. So with that said, how um going back to what Dylan said as well, that you guys are going after the quadruple or um the invincibles i just don't see how you guys are going to do that if you don't improve on what uh, on the team you had last season it's impossible for me to see you guys improving on what you did last season which is either an invincible or a quadruple if you guys don't improve on that team that you had all right mm -hmm. so yeah you can go ahead all right so yeah i completely disagree remember before last season we lost Jesus, we lost Zinchenko, and we lost Sterling. And Prez were saying the same thing, that City is not as good as they were before. Before we lost those, we have also lost Sane over the years. We have lost Ferran Torres over the years. David Silva has retired. Yaya Torre has left. Company. We have lost a lot of quality you guys players. Him. But, you guys but we, brought in, we brought in great yeah. players at the same Sorry, time this year. Guys well, as yet. Right, yeah. you haven't replaced him as yet, so that's why I'm saying we're the team right now. I'm not talking about future incomings that you might get before, I'm just talking about right now. You guys seem a bit light to me. Uh, I'm just being honest. To, to, be honest, honest man. to be honest, I feel like I feel like every time City end up in one of these situations, Pep always finds a solution to it. Mm -hmm. Because or you had true. before, or what? Um, he had the solution before. Or that or that too, because you said we're lo losing Mars. Obviously, Mars is a big loss because of his contribution over the last five years. But if you realize Mars has not been in the main 11, like to the latter end of the season, it was Bernard Silva on the right. And then 
obviously Gundogan is an our next big loss, but then as Aaron said, Foden is going to slide into that midfield role now. So he has the solution. So even though it doesn't seem like we're improving the squad, he he always finds a way to tweak the team so that we get the job done at the end of the day. And Alvarez, like we're not exactly. talking about exactly. Exactly. Alvarez. Exactly. But then didn't say it in the chat. Like the cat, you know that I normally like, agree with it, right? But Bro. I, I just cannot like the only person that if Gunno are not starting, let's say Gunno and left after the community shield. Well, I don't think we'd be having this conversation, right? But the fact that Foden was on the bench, knocking the, the wall at the bench while the man them were playing, like I just I just can't see it. Like, like Bernardo don't go in yet. Like Dog, this is this is depression, dog. The more I think about it, listen, on, bro. Mar, you were you were gonna say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I agree with what you were saying. Uh, even though the guys may not agree, but I think our squad. If I'm being honest, I think Arsenal actually have a better squad than we do right now in terms of depth. In terms of depth, not necessarily quality of individual players, but if you look yeah. at Arsenal, they have like two or three solid players for every single position and pitch. In terms of um, the, the players that they brought in, Tim Buck and Slatin, um, centre back, right back, Declan Rice can play anywhere in the midfield. Havertz can play in the front line or in the midfield as well. I just feel that the players that we have lost, as Declan said, we didn't replace them well enough. I don't know if they have any plans to bring in other players before the window ends, but I think our squad has gotten weaker. So I would agree with what you were saying, actually. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, everyone gave predictions. I'm the host here, so I'll keep my predictions to myself. I the host, so yeah. Um, let's head into. Do you guys fear any teams? Um, going into the season, so we've seen obviously what Arsenal have done. We've seen Liverpool um, made a few brilliant signings. Um, yeah, I won't even mention the rest because the rest is just. Yeah, Manchester United just signed a 70 mil um, striker. 85. Uh, yeah, 75 mil Hoyland. Uh, yeah, so how are you guys feeling? Are you guys fearing any teams this season? Um. Well, I fear two teams. One in the short term and one in the long term. The short term team is going to be Liverpool. I think they have been our closest rivals for the last probably four seasons other than last season. Um, and how they have replaced that midfield and still looking to find midfielders is frightening for me because I, I personally liked um, Soboshlai from Leipzig. I like him. I was always a fan of McAllister. And I hear that they're still trying to get Lavia, Lavia from Southampton, who was formerly of City. And I, when I saw Lavia play at, for City, I thought he was good as well. So I fear them. The front line is still good. With Salah, Jata, Nunes looking like he is going to be a good striker next season. Diaz is back from injury. Um, Gakpo, <laughs> for him as well. So they're the team that I fear in the short term. In the long term, Newcastle, because of the investment that's going to come. You might be not looking at them right now, but in the future, they're going to come. Because Tonal is going to be there. Isak is a good player. They're going to sign other big players. So they're going to be a contender in the near, near future. All right, cool. Um, Mari? Yeah, I would agree about Liverpool. Because over the past, what, like four or five years, as um, he just said, they were our biggest rivals. And they have done good business, brought in some quality signings. So I think if club can get things clicking, they'll be a threat. Um, you can't count out Arsenal after the season that they just had, even though they couldn't manage to go all the way. They did put up a fight. They were the closest team to us last season, and they've made good um, signings as well. So can't count them out. If Arteta can get things right with the new pieces that he's brought in, they could be dangerous. Um, a dark horse team that I'd like to mention, Aston Villa. Mm-hmm. Una Emery done a great job with them last season. And the 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 win the chance for winner that they have had is really is a brilliant one. They've brought in Musa Diaby from Leverkusen. It's going to fit in well with Leon Bailey, hopefully. Um, they brought in Yuri Tielemans. Just, just relax. Leon Bailey is a quality player. Um, 
Telemans. <laughs> Telemans. They brought in Paul Torres from Villarreal, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's three quality signings already. And Emery's Emery's a top coach. Obviously, Dylan and Relic, you guys know him, former manager of the club. So I think they're a good dark dark horse team. They might pull out something special. Where did they finish last season? Seven? Yeah. I and got into the seventh or eighth and got into the Our conference league one. spot, so yeah, they're yeah. going to be looking to improve on that. So Aston Villa and uh, Alex. Yeah, I mean, first of all, Liverpool, as both of them said, I mean, the last three years they've been having midfield issues, and they finally got two creative attacking midfielders who can help them, you know, go forward and better than Henderson and whoever else, whoever else they used to use. And also the fact that Klopp changed his system from a regular back four to having Trent inverted. And that's getting more out of Trent because we all know how good he is going forward. So I think they're going to be up there with City again next season. Um, as Amari said, Austin Villa look dangerous. Like the signs they're making are very good. Chelsea, I, I, I think Chelsea will come good. I think there, there are a couple of signings away, but I think if they, get, if they secure a midfield signing, Caicedo or whoever else, and maybe they're signing a centre back from Monaco. I forgot his name. But they signed him today or tomorrow. I think the Pochettino has been playing some really fluid football. So I think they, they can sneak into the top four maybe next season. But we'll have to see. All right. Cool. Um, so, yeah, back to the spicy part now. Um, as you guys should know, uh, there are going to be five teams in the Champions League next season. Uh, with the new format, such and such. So, yeah, I want to get your top five predictions in order. So, we're not going to do it like Richard um, in the Manchester United episode and, and try and get away from it. We're going to go in order from um, first to fifth. So, I'm, I'm, I'll am i start with you, Alex. All right. So, obviously, I have to go City first because, you know, exactly. Um, second, I'd say Liverpool. I say Liverpool second because I think they they are one one more sign away from you know actually bringing City to the end like they've done in the previous seasons. Third, I'd say Arsenal third. I say I think you guys are not really at the level of City and Liverpool yet, but you're the best of the rest. And yeah, fourth, I'd say Manchester United. And fifth, I'd say Chelsea. All right, cool. Um, I disagree with um, what you were saying about like Liverpool only needing one more signing. I would say their backline still needs some touching up. Uh, the midfield is there, but like for starters, but like the depth of the midfield, and you know, with their style of play, they always have midfield injuries. So I think they need a bit more depth in, um, in quality. For the midfield and I think they need like another player in that back line someone fresh because Gomez is just not ready um, I'm, I'm not sure if Matip is still around Konate and Van Dijk okay but someone who can fill in at maybe center back and left back I was thinking or center back and right back to give them a bit more tactically like maybe a Pavard or something like that um, so that they can adjust better I don't think they are um, at the levels of City and, and, and Arsenal. So I'll agree with that. I'll disagree with that, what you said, I should say. But yeah, bro, um, everything else sounds good to me, except just that, what you said. Um, Aaron, your top five. All right, so I'm going to go with City for first to win four in a row. Then... Since we're on the Arsenal show, I'll go with Arsenal second. Um, just to satisfy you guys, give you a false sense of security going into the season so that when on a flop, when a flop hard. All right? Okay. So, yeah, Arsenal second. Third, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Liverpool third. I think Salah's goals will bring them to third. And then fourth. Uh. Should I go Man United? All right, let's go Man United fourth, and then fifth, I'll go Newcastle. All right, cool. 
Um, Mari, let's go. Your top five predictions. Uh, it's hard to call, but I don't know. For some reason, I'm not a betting man, but I like to look at things and say the probability of us just keep winning, keep winning, keep winning. It has to end at some point. I don't want this to be the season, obviously. I wish we would just keep winning every year, but sometimes you have to wonder if this might be the year where another team wins the Premier League. So, I think you guys might hate me for this, but I'm going to go. <laughs> uh, the two other fans. <laughs> the like land of Arsenal fun, you know. <laughs> it, bro, I was... <laughs> Bro, we have to lose at some point. All right, City, 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 City. <laughs> city will still win. Uh, I'm going to go Liverpool second, Arsenal third, <laughs> Man United fourth, and I'm going to sneak in Una Emery and the Villains for fifth. <laughs> All right, bro. Yeah. Dylan, anything you want to add, comment on? That, that one left me speechless. I'm here. I'm thinking <laughs> Arsenal first. <laughs> and then, ah, bro. I just, ah. I just don't like. I completely agree with you for Liverpool. I just don't get how you're gonna lose your captain, the hole in midfielder that has gotten you there. They don't even have a replacement hole in midfielder yet. So like, what are we talking about? Liverpool coming second, second or third? Mm-hmm. Like that, that, that to me is crazy. You're going to lose Fabinho. Fabinho just was 19. All right, what he has so much more to learn. He's it's not like he's a proven midfielder. He got relegated and he's 19. It's not like say Tielemans who got relegated and he's an experienced player, or Madison who got relegated and he's an experienced player. He played an okay season in a team that got relegated and he was young. So I don't see how he's gonna come in and just instantly Liverpool are going to be back to where they were challenging you guys. Ram- Ramsdale got relegated and is the starting keeper for Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, but he had a whole lot of experience. He had pre uh, he had previous seasons with Sheffield. He had previous seasons um with Bournemouth. And he, he had that experience. Lavia only played one full season. But and he's not team. But I'd so, say I'd say I'd say Lavia has been training with the first team of City since he was sixteen. You know, he's been learning under Fernandinho. Under Rodri, and then he went to Southampton to get more game time, and was probably their best player in the season. So that's why he's rated at what forty million, around their fifty million. He, I think mm. he's going to come in. He might take a while to adjust to club style of play, but once he's fully up and running, then you know he's there for five, six years. They're going to be really good. Okay. And also the back line, back line as well. Away. Like Liverpool right now with their squad is one injury away from just the season railing off and then the prediction was just, oh no, we just know that Liverpool and Klopp are so... No, nah, I don't think that's foolishness. Because yeah, you lose... I, what, I what, Steelers? Is five of them lose so far? Like, I don't, I don't get that one, but... It's probably in a left, right? Yeah. He's up to he was, yeah, I think so. He was linked to a Saudi club. I'm not sure if he left us yet, but... Yeah, bro. I, I just don't see it. Um, but yeah, this your guys' opinion. I can't fight you for it. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Um, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell a friend to tell a friend. And yeah, that was it. The Manchester City versus Arsenal preview game. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming, guys. Um, we'll no problem. love to have you guys on again. Uh, We'll see you guys in the season. And yeah, that's it. Um, Peace. The Gunners Podcast.